HD packs. Let's be honest. They're like that used car salesman that's just asking for a swift and clean jab right in the kisser. Now, there is an endless supply of improvement projects out there. Uh-oh. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. Naturally, it is tempting to declare these projects as useless and even blasphemous according to the sacred scrolls handed down by the retro gaming congregation across Reddit and Discord. But maybe all these projects need is a fair shot. As with all great game development, some of the keys to a great mod are creativity, persistence, and effort. So if you're a creator that is up for a challenge in this area, this Messin NES Enhancement Pack tutorial may be for you. If you're just starting out, some of your first attempts probably start with graphics that look like this. Look on a mask with my boy. Then, after hours of coding and troubleshooting, the product for your follow-up efforts may look something like this magnificent piece of art. But it still looks like hot garbage. None of the seams are smooth. Areas are obviously repeating. This is the recurring curse of that typical HD pack look. But this is where full background replacement comes in. With a full background approach, you have full creative freedom. You have... So let's do this. All right, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to have maximum creative freedom with your HD packs. Please keep in mind, this is a more advanced video. And if you're in the beginning stages, check out some of my previous videos in the video description. Anyway, if you have worked on some of these packs in the past using the more beginner-friendly traditional approach, you may be familiar with the tile sheets that look something like this. You'll notice a lot of the tiles are made of little 8x8 pixel boxes. What the NES emulator does is reference those boxes and fills in the sheet with various graphics. Due to memory limitations with most NES games, the end result is that a lot of areas repeat and seams often don't mesh. Instead of doing this, what we're going to do is make most of the tiles transparent. And we're going to have Messin reference one large PNG file as the entire background for the level scene. The output can be anything like this example here. Or, alternatively, you can create a map outlining the entire game like this example for Metroid here. This larger option is actually the example we'll be using in this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is have Messin kick off the HD pack builder at least one time. If you're unsure how to do this, follow part one of the Messin Enhancement Pack tutorial playlist. Next, download a couple of files that will be included in the video description. The first one here is a grid that has been pre-made that covers the entire game. This will be useful for troubleshooting. The Photoshop file is an entire layered picture example that has been created for Metroid. Keep in mind that while some of the assets and examples like the Photoshop file here are specific examples for Metroid, most of the general principles shared in the video can be carried over to other games. Granted, it's a lot of work to put together some of these assets for specific games, but that's also partly why I'd consider this an advanced tutorial. The last file here is an Excel file specific for Metroid that will be helpful in creating some of the coding needed to apply the background to the game. We're going to look at the Excel file in more detail, but before we do, we're going to need to look up some reference information. This specific information will be different depending on the game you're working on. I'm going to Google Metroid RAM Map. If you're working on Star Tropics, you'd look up Star Tropics RAM Map, etc. All of this information is like a cross reference list that represents different things happening in the game. For example, the line here shows that at address 31 in the game, if the value is a 1, it means the game is paused. We're most interested for now in scrolling down here to the map location values. This 4F address represents the various Y locations the main character occupies for the game. The 50 address is the same, except it represents the X locations that the main character occupies for the game. Now we're going to go back to the Excel file. Here's where those values become important. You'll notice a lot of lines here that represent condition functions we're going to place in our Messin highres.txt file. These are if-then statements that tell Messin to do things under certain criteria. For example, 
The first section here tells Messen that this line is a condition function. The text tells Messen the name of the condition. You can call that whatever you'd like. This is telling it to look at the memory of the game to see what the values are doing. And here is the, where the values are plugged in from that RAM map we googled a moment ago. Here it tells Messen to look at address 49. If the value at that address is 0, the game is set to scroll up. Again, this will be different depending on the game you're using for your project. For Metroid specifically, if it's a 3, it's set to scroll right. For simplicity in this example, we're going to outline the process for just scrolling right. If you have a game scrolling in multiple directions, you will need to repeat this process outlined in the video for all the different directions. Under the scroll direction coding is some coding we'll skip for now, but they will eventually be needed to address some graphic glitches later on. Under that are the X and Y map coordinate conditions. You will notice there is a condition for every single X and Y possibility. You may also notice that the values are in hex format rather than decimal format. This means that instead of going from 9 to 10, it goes to 0a, 0b, etc. To help illustrate what these re values represent, this is a Photoshop file that you may find useful. You'll see a set of numbers on the top and left. These represent the X and Y coordinates of the various parts in the game. Down here might look familiar in the lower left as the starting point of the game. This starting point is at the X value of 3 and the Y value of E. Once we have all of the X and Y coordinates established, we can move on. So the top area we just covered pertains to all of the if statements that need to be established for Messen to understand what we want to do. This next set of coding represents the then portion of the if then logic. All of the wording inside the brackets on the left pertains to all of the conditions or if statements that need to be met before Messen does some type of replacement action. In the first case, the scroll direction right text pertains to the very first set of conditions mentioned shortly after opening this Excel file. You may recall we were going to set up all of the coding for cases where the game is set to scroll right. As previously mentioned, if the particular game you're working on can scroll in all directions, you need to repeat the process in the video for all directions and set up unique coding for each direction. Then, you may notice an AND symbol. This means that the first condition here needs to be met, and the next condition needs to be met as well, and so on. In this case, the X map coordinate needs to be set at 1, and the Y map coordinate needs to be set at 2. Assuming all of the conditions in the brackets are met, then the section after the brackets tells Messen what to do. The background command is a common command that tells Messen to place in some type of background. The map top layer.png section is the name of your entire background file you're using for graphical replacement. The first number is the brightness level, the next number after that is the scroll ratio, and the next number after that is the vertical scroll ratio. The last two values can be useful for parallax scrolling, but we're not going to mess with that. So in this example, all three numbers will be set to 1. The 20 here represents where in the foreground or background the image will be placed. In our case, we are using a value of 20. This will result in the image being placed over a good amount of the native graphics for the game. If you wanted to place something further back, you could use a value something along the lines of 10. Lastly, the last two values are the X and Y coordinates of where Messen should reference when inserting the giant PNG file we're going to use. These are some of the more challenging figures to figure out, and it's where that grid with numbers becomes helpful. You can guess and check values periodically and adjust everything until the final behavior is what you want. The values shown in the example here work with Metroid on a 2x resolution scale. If you're working on a resolution of 1x, these values will need to be different. I haven't tried dividing everything by 2 to see if that works, but if it were me, and if I was working on a 1x pack, I'd try that first. Once we have all the coding for the one location established, you will simply need to repeat all of that coding for all of the x and y possibilities. This is where something like Excel can come in very handy. 
You can copy, use formulas, and identify patterns that greatly increases the speed of your work. Once we have all of the X and Y coordinates established, we can then insert the coding into the highres.txt file. One important note is that Messen reads the coding you establish from top to bottom, and if there are multiple lines of coding that match, and there is some type of conflict, Messen will always prioritize the highest line of coding. This means that order matters. At this point, we're going to save. Once saved, we have our coding and we have our map toplayer.png file in the appropriate location in the pack. And so now we should be able to test to see how our example coding turned out. As we're pulling up the ROM that matches the name of our enhancement pack folder, I'll mention that you won't see the background until we start scrolling right. The reason for this is because we added that condition in the brackets that told Messen not to show our PNG file until the character starts moving right. And there we go, our test background is showing. Now, as we were moving, you may have noticed a slight glitch as the character was moving between locations. In case you missed it, here it is again. This is a small graphic glitch we're going to fix using some additional coding. To do that, we're going to bring up that Excel file again. You may remember at the beginning of the video there were two lines that were skipped that were going to be used to fix some graphic conditions. How did we figure out those address values of FD00 and FD01? Well, they weren't determined from the Metroid RAM map we found earlier. Instead, this is something you'll likely need to figure out yourself based on the game you're working on. To do this, you'll need to open the game and mess in again, hold down Control on your keyboard and hit M. This will bring up a memory viewer. Make sure your memory type is set to CPU memory. This is showing you some of the inner workings of the game. As we move left to right, you will notice some things. Specifically at F listed on the left and D listed on the top, the numbers change quite a bit depending on where you're at. F on the left and D on the top pertains to that FD memory address showed earlier in Excel. What we are going to do is look for the exact numbers that come up when that flash occurred. To help in this process, we can hit minus on the keyboard to slow the speed way down. As we're moving, wait for that flash to occur, and once it does, hit escape to pause the game. I've already done this process and determined that there are really two values that seem to relate to that quick flash. So what we're going to end up doing is showing a really quick static image that does not scroll for that very brief period, and we're going to place all of that coding above the coding we've already placed. The reason we will place above everything above the previously placed coding is because, again, Messen works from top to bottom when looking for matches with conditions. This means that for very brief moments, what Messen will do is prioritize some of the new coding instead of the first coding we created. So, open the Excel file again and move to another tab created here titled Running Right Flash Fixes. On this tab, there's a lot of new coding that's very similar to the previously created coding with some key differences. One is that there's a couple of additional conditions in the brackets called Running Right Fix 0 and Running Right Fix 1. This is telling Messen that all of the previous conditions need to be met, plus the fact that memory address FD needs to match either 0 or 1. And we previously determined that using the memory of viewer in Messen. Aside from adding those conditions for memory address FD, the other important difference is that instead of three 1s in this space, we're going to have a 1 and two zeros. The reason for this is because the last two of those three numbers pertain to the scrolling speed that our replacement image should use, before it was set to 1 so it would scroll. In this case, we'll set it to 0 so that we'll briefly show a static image. And the last important difference is that all of the X and Y coordinates will be different. Again, this will be challenging to figure out, but guessing and checking using the grid template is helpful. Once you fill in a couple, the rest aren't too bad as they typically follow a pattern that can be easily carried out in Excel. 
Once this is done for all the X and Y possibilities, copy all of the coding from this tab and place right here between the coding for the conditions and the coding for the running write PNG file replacement logic. Hit save. Once this is done, you should be able to test to see if the new coding addressed the graphic glitch. Close and open Messen again, and look to see how it looks when running right. Once the necessary coding is in place, you should have the freedom to delete the contents of the template here and replace it with whatever environment art you'd like when designing your pack. Before signing off, I'm going to show one last detail that may help in making efforts to replace full screen backgrounds. What I just showed can be helpful when wanting to draw over the top of existing backgrounds. But what if you wanted to do instead make native graphics transparent and put a background behind things? To do that, all you need to do is change all the 20 values here in the coding. A value of 10 should work when placing an image behind things. In addition to that, you'll need to make some of the native tiles transparent. There are a couple of ways to do this. One is to record all of the graphics using the HD Pack Builder and delete them in Photoshop. Another method is recording them manually. To do manually, either you need to create your own or find an existing transparent block in your pack. Here you can see that on CHR0 there is a transparent block in the lower right. So what you need to do is find the relevant section that pertains to that block. In our case it's the very bottom of the pack and it's this last one here. Copy it and place it right under your map coding but above your CHR coding. Then go to the sprite or tile map viewer depending on what you need to make transparent. Right click on the graphic you'd like to replace or make transparent and select copy tile HD pack format. Paste the resulting value over the memory address section here. The end result is that it should now be transparent. Let's save, close, and open Messen and see if it works. So, if you wanted to change all the 20 values to 10 values and repeat the process I just did to make existing tiles transparent, you can place an image behind things rather than in front of things. In any case, that should cover all that you should need to know to place a giant PNG image in front of or behind native graphics in an NES game. As previously mentioned, if you're working on another game, there will be differences you'll need to address. but. Most of the principles shown in this advanced tutorial should carry over, and you should have the power to create packs similar to the one shown here, with a lot less limitations than you normally have with traditional graphic replacement. I'll have a link in the video description below that has some of the assets and templates used. I hope you found this video useful, and that's all for now. Happy gaming! Attention. Ending sector C science personnel, please report status. Emergency cleanup team to biological waste processing plant. Attention, administration personnel, evacuate sector D immediately.